so the problem with the box is that's the Colombian flag. Right, it's the Colombian flag. We're missing the shield. But yeah. it's also kind of, I, I want to say it's kind of my fault for not picking that up right off the bat. I mean, you found out. It's yeah. it's the Ecuadorian flag, and that makes sense because of the Ecuadorian wrapper. Right. And I was thinking about that the whole time. I was like, wait, no, that's the Ecuadorian. I had to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's what here's what makes it worse is I looked it up, and I was like, it's not the Ecuadorian flag because you got this fucking big shield in the middle. Yeah. Right. And and then it was it wasn't until like we're midway through the podcast where you're like, yeah, but Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. On this episode, we smoke the Crowned Heads 4 Kicks Mule Kick Limited Edition 2023. We've also got some gourmet coffee from Cooper's Cask Coffee in uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island. So we're going to try this out. Looking forward to smoking with you today. I'm your host, Johnny Midas, and you're listening to Burn Line Podcast. Burn Line Podcast. The burn line on a well-crafted cigar is straight and sharp as a razor. Much like our wit and wisdom. And what's up, everybody? Welcome to Burnline Podcast, coming to you, as always, not live from the hot box, the smoky back room where deals are struck and fortunes are made adjacent to the Blanco Cigar Lounge, nestled amongst the complex of rooms that comprise Union Cigar, Hanover, Pennsylvania, USA. I'm your host, Johnny Midas. Uh, and co host, Angel El Fumo Suario. And I am joined today by. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Angel? Yeah, it's that uh, kind of morning. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not up. Well, this coffee should get us up. So, we have got this um, rum barrel aged coffee from Cooper's Cast Coffee. And it's smooth. It's pretty fucking amazing. How many how many uh, grams did you use? Or so about seventy. Seventy. Oh, we go full out. We don't do no forty, fifty stuff. We yeah, yeah. 70. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I drink mine black, of course. Um, it is not infused. You can taste the rum barrel on it, but it's definitely, like, I feel like the beans were probably dumped in a rum barrel and then, like, rotated. Yeah. You know? I like it, man. It's like yeah. having to drink rum without the rum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes you perfectly legal for first thing in the morning. <laughs> yeah, El Fumo's only 20, so... That's right. It's not, not legal to drink out early in the morning. All right. Welcome to Burn Line Podcast. We're smoking the Four Kicks Mule Kick Limited Edition 2023 uh, from Crowned Heads. Um, so I want to go ahead and get this lit up so that we can uh, start enjoying it. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, the presentation of the cigar and talk about the cigar a little bit. So... Why don't we go ahead and um, and get this cut? But you know, to light it up, we're gonna have to take this foot band off. So I guess we should talk about the cigar, right? Yeah. Before we take that off, yeah, the foot band is actually nice. I like that gold. Yeah. Johnny Midas gold. Yeah. Well, it's a little too uh, brassy. I prefer like that Middle Eastern gold, you know, that really pops. Yeah. Uh, that yellow, yellow gold. Yeah. That yellow, yellow gold. Yeah. I like this brassy look, though. Um, so yeah, so uh, like a lot, not all of them, but quite a few crowned head cigars have the crowned heads footband that's gold with the black script, you okay. know, crowned head script. Uh, very common on their cigars. Um, and then the four kicks. This is a like I said, it's it's a, a brassy gold, like a white gold almost, um, with that crimson. It's kind of darker than that red. Uh, it says four kicks on it. It's a really good looking band. Um, it's rude-ish. Yeah, it's three dimensional, um, you know, stamped. So that is the four kicks mm-hmm. packaging. And then underneath that is the second secondary band that says limited edition 2023, mm-hmm. which it's kind of cool. It's in English, but they made it look like the edition limitado that. Um, Cuba puts on their cigars, right? Right. Although they're, those are actually, um, actually a reflection of where they're allowed to sell those cigars or export them. Um, but I thought it's cool that they cribbed that 
uh, just a, so I guess they sort of kept costs down by just adding a band to this one, as opposed to the regular four kicks. So the mule kick is always the limited edition version of the four, four kicks for the year. We'll talk more about that later. I feel like we should have been drinking Moscow mule. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but to, uh, kind of wrap up looking at the cigar before we take the footband off and get it cut and lit. Um, just a couple of things. Number one, you will notice that none of the three bands are lined up. No, no. Right? So that annoys me. Yeah, a little right? bit. Um, now, the, the retail on this is twelve ninety five something like that, uh, MSRP. This is a 5 and 5 eighths by 52. It has an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Um, it has a Nicaraguan and Dominican filler with Dominican binder, including Piloto Cubano uh, leaf, which is kind of special, yeah. uh, Dominican leaf. Um, and the wrapper looks like Ecuadorian Sumatra. It's got, you know, that sort of reddish. It's a little darker than some yeah, absolutely. Sumatran wrappers. I mean, it looks like... You know, it's flirting with Maduro there. Um, it's kind of cool looking. It's definitely on the rustic side. It's not toothy, but it is does have that like sandpaper. It's very beautiful uh, finish. <laughs> it is. It's really good looking. Um, Probably one of our best looking uh, rappers. Yeah, yeah. It it really is. Uh, very gorgeous rapper. Hard to you know really describe in audio. Um, it's not mottled. It does have, you know, different colors, obviously. It's a leaf. Um, but yeah, it's got that, uh, I don't know, chocolate brown. Yeah, it's very chocolate looking. Yeah. Like cocoa, like, yeah. You could almost just eat it instead of something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's the, uh, that's what the cigar looks like. We'll talk a little bit more about it. But first, why don't we get it uh, cut and lit, which requires taking the foot band off yeah. so off it comes and check this out this is my new cutter so i ordered these uh mule kicks online mm -hmm. right and uh they're hard to find they made three thousand boxes of 10 like they do every year and uh i have a friend that collects this stuff for me and same person i got the um opus x story okay from well apparently they like the business because they sent me this it looks like um those mint tins yeah you know the the, uh, the old-fashioned uh, yeah it looks like an altoids mint and it's it's that cool like it's there like go again. tan and tan and black with red drew estate birth cigars with the brooklyn bridge or whatever bridge that is yeah, on. I think it's in brooklyn. and <laughs> check it out that is a cool it's black with like it's like a i don't know tan, like, no, tan? no that's gray Something like that. Great. Anyway, free cutter. This is actually the same as Nick the Bricks, except the coloring is different. Oh, and it's a cigar holder. Yeah. Nice. It's the uh, the Drew Estate. Close-ended double guillotine with built-in cigar holder. So I'm going to cut with this. And what are you cutting with? I have a Vertigo, Vertigo close-ended. Sing Single guillotine. guillotine. Yeah. Nice. This thing's nice. Yeah, well, so that is a um, double-sided single guillotine. Yeah. There are single-sided single guillotines where the bottom isn't a blade. Right. I used to have one of those. Yeah, and this one has a cigar holder too. Mm, eh, I think they were. I think they made an effort. I think they threw energy in a general direction. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and get these cut. As always, we remind you to clip those cigars with authority no limp wristed cutting allowed tap this out the official cutting is brought to you by fat boy cigars the bold and delicious flavors of premium hand selected tobacco leaves are highlighted in the original jacked cigars by fat boy cigars and don't forget to try the new fat boy cigars boots on the ground series for every cigar you purchase in this series fat boy cigars will donate one dollar to charities benefiting our frontline heroes Fat Boy Cigars, welcome to the Fat Boy's world. Speaking of Fat Boy Cigars, I have a care package from them. Oh. So we're going to open that up once we get done toasting these bad boys up. Yeah. All right, so we got uh, 
finished tapping the tapping the head out where we clipped that and uh i think we're ready to light so what uh you're lighting up with the triple flame yeah <clears throat> big yeah. tank yeah that's like a uh vertigo knockoff yeah i'm i am using the uh rocky patel dual flame uh it's one torch one soft butane flame white and rose gold because hashtag johnny Midas. Yeah. and as always we remind you toasted not roasted so we are just gently rolling the cigar between our fingers as we uh apply heat shouldn't catch on fire if you see any kind of bubbling or boiling then you are doing it wrong and just getting a nice roasting there so I like mm. to blow on my foot a little after I'm done, mm -hmm. just to make sure that cherry spreads. I know some people do this. I'm twirling the cigar for those who can't. Yeah, see. yeah. Great, great job on the audio only podcast. They do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Twirl the cigar around. Yeah. But it's like I don't. I tried it a couple times. I don't see the effectiveness of it. Cause I like to um, draw air through. That's the fastest way to spread the cherry, but not too fast i don't want it to flare up and then i exhale my first mouthful of smoke across the foot it's like a ritual i don't know why i do it i maybe i i just i saw someone do it one day um i've got a pretty even light um cherry's definitely there man that first straw uh -huh. <clears throat> that's some weird notes yeah it is so i am getting uh first of all there's um barnyard right um with black pepper but it's not like it's not super strong black pepper and then i would say the the secondary is like if you took a graham cracker and you toasted it with this torch yeah with like a marshmallow on it yeah there's like a, a right at the curve of the yeah it's weird yeah i'm having trouble describe that flavor mm-hmm because there's definitely a toasted note in there. Yeah. And I don't know, as it comes out the nostrils, there's something else there, too. Let's see if you can pick up on that. I'm having trouble on that one. I almost want to say, not really a cedar, but something wood. Yeah, I was going to say something wooden, but um, you, I think we'll have to go with that for now. It's like toasted wood. Um, it imagines... It, it tastes the way I imagine the toasted staves they put in whiskey barrels to age them would taste like i i've never actually licked one okay but if, if i did uh i imagine they taste a little like that yeah. um yeah very interesting notes and um the pepper starts to coat the hard palate after a few puffs like the pepper sticks around on my palate yeah really interesting all right, so you know we're we're different from at least I am. I know uh, El Fumo. This is what your third show. Yeah, fourth. Fourth show. So um, for me and Nick both, the first puff is like our favorite, mm -hmm. and we do all the ritual and get everything right so that the first puff tastes great. And uh, and I don't know, a lot of folks are like you. You got to burn a half inch. Yeah. The the first half. So we're gonna let this burn down for a little bit. While we do that, why don't we open this care package from Fat Boy Cigars? So, big shout out to uh, Fat Boy Cigars. Of course, they sponsor the show with the official cutting, and uh, we have smoked a couple of their cigars on the show. Can you keep an eye on that? I what do we got? I feel like as every time I draw, that gets bigger. Well, yeah, you got a little pop in your wrapper for sure. It's definitely gotten bigger since I started. Thanks for inter interrupting the uh, Fat Boys part. So, uh, <laughs> I just, something different that I've seen. Yeah, there's a there's a crack in your wrapper. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's get into this package. So this showed up uh, the day after Christmas. So pretty cool, you know, like for the holidays. Um, of course, it's got the gorgeous uh, brown paper wrapping with the Fat Boys tape on it which I sort of pre-removed because getting that off on the show takes a long time and sounds really loud in the <laughs> mic or whatever. Uh, and then uh, we've got this 
regular USPS box inside. So let's see what is in here. And got a card and ooh, a handwritten note. Ooh, and, dig it. Oh, look at this. Sweet. Is there coffee? Yeah. Nice. That was unexpected. And that looks like cigars. Yeah. Right. And a bowl wrap. Sweet. Yeah, this is uh this is packaged really well as usual. They've got paper and bubble wrap, um, Boveda packs, you know, Ziploc bag to keep the humidity in there. Look, I feel that. Ooh. Like I'm gonna keep that <laughs> that pack. It's fresh. Yeah. And it looks like we have got two of the thin white line from the Boots on the Ground series, and that is a gorgeous cigar. Look at that. It's got the little pigtail cap. Oh yeah. And the um, the black string is uh, with the with this tag. We talked tag, about it with the yeah. thin red line. The um, it's almost like yarn. It's supposed to remind you of a boot lace, mm -hmm. and these are supposed to remind you of dog tags. So pretty cool nice. uh, branding there. I like the presentation. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have to smoke these on the show. The uh, thin white line. I'm looking forward to it. I've heard really good things. And, yeah. The two that we smoked on this, the show, the Jacked and the Thin Red Line, phenomenal cigars. Yeah. It's really, really good cigars um, at a unbelievable price point. Um, in fact, I think I gave him some shit on the show about, like, you should charge more for these or something. Charge more, and there's a lot more to it. Mm-hmm. And just keeping this four kicks lit. So there's also coffee in here, and uh, there's two packages. This says Six Bean Baller. And this says Rise and Grind. So, two different blends here. And this is from 2C Premium uh, Coffee. And there's a little note in here. Hi, Johnny and Nick. Just hold up. <laughs> Thank you in advance for trying 2C Premium Coffee. I'm Teresa, the owner. The coffee is inspired by all of the coffee that accompanied me to my kids' multitude of sporting events. The Bali Blue Band pairs well with Fat Boy Cigars Thin White Line. Cool. Um, let me know what you think. Teresa Hunt, 2C Premium Coffee. Well, Teresa, that is fantastic of you. Uh, thanks so much. Can't wait to try this. You know what? Let's do this. Let's pair this coffee and the Thin White Line on the show. I'm down. I love it. Um, and a couple of business cards in here. So thank you, Teresa. And, of course, Fat Boy Cigars as well and looks like we got a christmas card as well isn't that awesome happy holidays oh nice i like that pickup truck yeah yeah happy holidays please enjoy this coffee from ac premium coffee or 2c i'm sorry premium coffee wishing you guys a successful year fat boy cigars chuck and gretchen oh mm -hmm. well you guys are the best uh we really like working with chuck and gretchen um mostly because we like good cigars <laughs> and these are affordable good cigars <laughs> Um, but also, you know, they're like the original, um, small company, you know, it's just a couple of folks trying to do their thing, uh, here in America. And we, of course we support that. And when you're putting out cigars that everyone can afford yeah. that are, you know, really top notch, you know, like scoring in the forties, um, you know, that's obviously something Burnline can get behind. Oh, yeah. They do need to come out with an edition wrapped in gold, but... <laughs> talk about that later yeah yeah well shout out to fat boys merry christmas happy holidays should definitely go out there sometime plus western pennsylvania is beautiful as it is anyway well i already deliver out there real close so i might uh find a way to like uh combine my podcast with my um <laughs> real real life work right get a visit going all right so uh let's get back to this cigar we've burned it down a little bit and i'd like to talk about the cigar and the presentation um so we're about a th i don't know three eighths of an inch in all right so tell me what you're tasting now because you know for the folks out there that want to wait that half inch still some pepper that uh Greg it has it has calmed down though yeah right the pepper has calmed down a little Not bit as much i think the wood has picked up a little bit yeah do you think some of that peppering also spikes up from us, like, toasting, or, yeah, toasting the cigar? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's been my experience. 
Yeah. Um, still graham cracker with a little toasted marshmallow on it. And then that toasted wood. Yeah, it's like a toasted wood. It, it, to me, it, it, here's, what it, here's what I imagine is going on in my mind. Somebody takes a pecan mm -hmm. plank and like a, a blowtorch and just passes the heat over it and it starts to like brown. Mm -hmm. Not catch on fire, not like charcoal. There's no char in there, yeah. right? But it just starts to brown and like draw the sugars out. Yeah. And then they like uh, mash a graham cracker into it. Yeah. And then put some of those mini marshmallows on top and light those to where they like brown up and bubble a little bit. That's kind of what this reminds me of. A little bit of a buttered bread. I don't know if I'm describing that correctly. Yeah, I can see that. Like there's definitely a... Not like butter, butter, but like a... Butter. It's a rich, yeah, fatty sort of taste. Maybe... Um, hmm. Naturally sweet too, not like sugar sweet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Naturally sweet. Um, it's just such a unique flavor. It's hard to. Yeah, I was trying to. I was taking notes. Um, last night I smoked one, and I had put uh, tallow on there. Okay. You know, it's not quite butter, but it definitely is like this. So we were fatty, the, rich, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're on the right track. So it's like a buttery, but not buttery. Mm -hmm. So tallow might be the right word. I would say great flavor, medium. I'd call it a medium. Mm -hmm. uh, now, <clears throat> spoiler alert, when I smoked the spoiler alert, 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 who came up with that? Like, you can't even say that. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I thought it was mid maybe even on the softer side of mid until about halfway through the cigar mm -hmm. and then it turned full so it just really interesting smoke experience that i had yesterday because uh you know sometimes it changes strength a little bit but this was like kind of significant just like halfway through it went from you know a, a soft mid you know mid body mid strength to like Nope, I'm here. Yeah. So this reminds me a little bit of that Opusex story. Yeah, it does. So, and we're getting the, almost the exact same smoke output. Mm hmm So let's talk about the cigar. So this is a Crowned Heads product, and we'll we'll talk about Crowned Heads in a little bit too, right? Um, the Four Kicks Mule Kicks Limited Edition 2023. So going back to presentation, we talked about the cigar. Now the box. This is really cool. You can see the box here. This is a, a slide top wooden box that has 10 cigars side by side. They made 3,000 boxes of 10. The cigar itself is Nicaraguan and Dominican filler, including Dominican Piloto Cubano, okay. which is, you know, a, a special leaf. It's an expensive leaf. It's an expensive leaf. <laughs> and the uh, binder is Dominican. And the wrapper is Ecuadorian Sumatra. Yeah. Really, you know, just listening to those leaves, I'm like, this is going to be a good cigar. Yeah, it really right? is. Um, so that's why the packaging is so fascinating, because this box is matte, painted matte, right? It's not glossy, which is really cool. You don't see that a lot. It's got the Four Kicks logo stamped in, the Mule Kicks, the two... Yeah. Horseshoes, limited edition 2023. All that is stamped in and then gold foil. Uh, but the colors, the top half is yellow. The bottom half is divided into two equal strips of blue and red. This is the Colombian flag. I don't know why there's a Colombian flag. <laughs> I, I was thinking here the same thing too. Yeah. It's... I don't know where this color is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this matte paint is i mean it's just beautiful like i'm saving this box i have a few cigar boxes for my man cave yeah you know and this is one of very few boxes that doesn't pair with like a whiskey you know for a display that i'm saving because it's gorgeous but i don't i don't know where the color scheme came from you know it's dominican and nicaraguan tobacco it is uh manufactured in dominican republic by ep carrillo um Here's another interesting thing. When you open it up, it's got this liner, this stamped liner that almost looks like it has spider webs in it. Yep, I've seen that before. Many other companies use that exact same thing. Well, the company that 
the company that uses it all the time is Fuente, which is also Dominican. Um, and I don't remember seeing it on, you know, yeah. a, an, in another company's product. Uh, but I thought that was cool. I actually like, I, I like that liner. If you have cigars that are kind of tight in there, you can pull the liner and the cigar just rolls out without damaging it. But then trying to put the lid back on sucks. Yeah. I'm not sure what the purpose for that liner is. Is it just presentation? Mm, I think so. Because I was like, wax liner doesn't really do much. It doesn't do anything for the cigar. And of course, these are cello wrapped anyway. Um, but it does serve instead of a ribbon. And it's probably way cheaper than a ribbon. And easier to put in yeah. the box. Um, the other points I'll take off for presentation, like it's got the slide top. There's nothing to do with the lid. Yeah. So if you're a retailer, you got to like prop it up. Yeah. Like behind it or something. If they had put a slot on the uh, top of the box where you could like stand mm -hmm. the lid up in it, I would give it more points. But uh, closed and sitting on the table, that is a gorgeous fucking box. That is a really nice box. I mean, it's just beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a rectangled bottom with a rounded. Uh, yeah, the yeah the top top edges are not square; they're like rounded over. Mm -hmm. Um, except the front, so you can tell what the front is. Really interesting. So it's pretty cool. So if you would like to display it, just the box as is, you can stand it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It'll stand up like that. And maybe you do that, like if you're a retailer, you stand one whole box up and then have an open box. It would come up to about there. Yeah. And it's got uh, two horseshoes. Yep. The oh. Four Kicks logo. So, all right, so this cigar is um, a 5 and 5 eighths by 52, uh, quote unquote, Toro. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure they have a 6 by 50 Toro mold in their yeah. factory somewhere. It's definitely slightly bigger than a Toro, though. Yeah, well, it's a 52. And then I don't know, you know, the difference between a 50 and a 52 I, I don't think I could tell a difference in flavor, maybe in draw strength. Um, it is a great size and shape of cigar, but it was a little odd to me. Um, and it's manufactured at Tabacalera La Alianza, which is E.P. Carrillo's factory. Um, 3,000 boxes of 10 were made. This is not available at Union Cigar Hanover or pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, like I said, I, I have a special connection uh, that I order from. You might be able to find them online. Um, but when they're gone, they're gone. And I looked up a couple of places. They're all out of stock. Yeah. I'm sure all 3,000 boxes have sold already. Right, um, cigar bid's the next place. <laughs> yeah, cigar bid. Yeah, um, coveted cigar bid. And, you know, we'll we'll rank it later and talk about if you want to do that hunting. I know a lot of our listeners like to hunt for stuff Yeah. Um, online, that, that special cigar. I would say if you can get a box, I think the box is worth it. Like, this is a great-looking box. This is a yeah. cool, cool one to break out with your cigar friends and enjoy a nice smoke. Um, so, uh, like we said, the binder is Dominican. The filler is uh, Piloto Cubano and Nicaraguan with the Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Absolutely gorgeous uh, wrapper. Um, so, I think, uh, I think with that, why don't we uh, do our tobacconist tip of the week? And now your tobacconist tip of the week with Angel Solorio. Tobacconist tip of the week. So, had a customer had an issue, a friend of ours, um, where he was having an uneven burn. And he was about to, you know, because I used to do this too as a newbie, torch it to even it up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, don't do that. All you got to simply do is rotate the part that is sticking out further to the top. Because as we know, on Earth, you know, with gravity and air, fire goes up. So mm -hmm. the cherry itself, the flame that is on the cigar, will take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. So that way you're not torching and, you know, roasting your cigar. Because that's exactly what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to mess with the flavor. <laughs> and then you're not adding more heat. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a great tip. Oh, that is a nice ash, dude. Yep. You get like an inch and a half. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that is stacked nice. I dig it. Yeah, that's a great tip. So every once in a while, now, I very rarely have an uneven burn. 
mostly I have uneven burns and problems on the podcast because I'm running my mouth instead right. of smoking my cigar. Uh, yeah, but uh, right. yeah, instead you can rotate it so that the the part of the wrapper that's sticking out is on top. And like you said, you're not introducing more heat. You're not going to roast that leaf and change the flavor. And how long does it take to even out? About five, ten minutes. It's literally patience, but the, yeah. the, it's the payoff is worth it. Like I said, it's not going to ruin your experience and you're not damaging the cigar. And then, so should you change how you smoke while you after you do that? You know, draw more, draw less, or no, just... Really, you don't have to change much. Okay. Maybe you can give it a couple extra draws just to speed it up a little but i wouldn't do too much because then you're going to heat up the cigar. yeah yeah so you just just a little bit of work but again it comes with it comes with the territory smoking cigars you, it's just something you got to do with almost every stick a little mm -hmm. it's here and there mm -hmm. but it's part of it but i rotate mine as my as i go i don't wait for it to burn unevenly i just you know every few puffs i've rolled it a quarter of a roll yeah quarter of a turn and uh if i see like it's a little uneven right now. Yep. So I'll just put the longer part on top for a couple minutes. Yep. And then I'll rotate it again. Yep. It'll take care of itself. Yep. Good. Yeah, you'll notice a lot of these uh, guys that have been in the industry forever. Yeah. When they're smoking their cigar, like, it typically burns pretty well. Yeah. But also, if you watch them, they often hold their cigar with three fingers and a thumb instead of, like, a cigarette. Yeah. And you'll see they're just rotating it like that yep. as they smoke. Um. It's a little harder on a box press, but yeah, I, I, what I don't like about box press is it doesn't fit in my lips. If like the corners are yeah. vertically oriented, yeah. like I can turn it exactly from like flat side on top to the next flat side on top to the, yeah. but I can't put it in diagonally, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. So like, um, you know, kind of like a principe. Yeah. And also, um, I have a lot of trouble getting a tight um vacuum yeah. with my lips around a small ring gauge box press i would say 48 is definitely the smallest i yeah. want to go on a box press but really i'm i would prefer like a 52. yeah like this one is a 52. yeah not a box press this is a regular parejo so let's talk a little bit about um the four kicks mule kicks and then we'll talk about crowned heads because it's really interesting um yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, who's Crowned Heads? You know, boutique brand. Um, we don't have any Crowned Heads up here, do we? No, we do not. Yeah, no Crowned Heads. Um, I think I've seen some down south. Um, but uh, Carolina, correct? Yeah, uh, yes. Um, when I was in Charleston, uh, we had some Crowned Heads there. And also in Dallas. Yeah. Um, we had, like, all their facings uh, yeah. in Dallas. Weird. I was in Raleigh and uh, no cigar lounges. It was kind of hard to find a cigar lounge near in the north end of Raleigh. Huh. So we had smoke shops that sold cigars, but <laughs> kind of like those glassware yeah, head shop types. Or the, yeah. So that was yep. Tough. yep. So, okay, the Four Kicks came out in 2011. It got a 91 rating from Cigar Fish right, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, fantastic cigar and got like this cult following um so what crowned heads did in uh 2012 was they released a limited edition blend called the four kicks mule kick that had the original cigar but a different wrapper okay. right now it's an interesting approach i know some folks are like 80 to 90 percent of the flavor you know is the wrapper i i don't agree i don't go that high because I've smoked Seiko and Volato leaves just rolled up, right, okay. to test the flavor. You know, I'm I'm in that stage of my cigar journey where I'm getting into, you know, regions and individual leaves and that sort of thing and the blending part of it. And, um, you know, when you smoke these leaves, like, they have flavor, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, uh, quite a bit of flavor. Um, now, if you roll up a wrapper leaf, right, uh, it is too strong. You you just, it's a difficult smoke. Um, but uh, Seiko and Volato, you know, the typical filler leaves, they've got plenty of flavor. So I'm I'm more in like the 70% camp yeah. for the wrapper. So, you know, changing just the wrapper 
on the four kicks doesn't create a new cigar, right? What it did do, though, and I remember I didn't smoke the 2012, um, but maybe like around 2016, I smoked them side by side, right? And what that allowed me to do is pick out the binder and filler flavors. Because I'm like, okay, with this wrapper, I'm tasting these flavors. With this wrapper, I'm tasting these flavors. Oh, I can see how much of the body of the cigar is actually the binder and filler. A really cool experiment that I did. And that's that's really was the experience that uh, helped change my perspective on how much flavor comes from the wrapper versus the rest of the cigar. Yeah. Right? Because you could just tell, like, this is the same cigar with a different wrapper. Right? Um, so that was pretty, pretty cool. So 2023, though, is different. 2023 is the first year where Crowned Heads, the limited edition Mule Kick, is a different cigar. You know, I'm a big fan of Ecuadorian wrappers right now. They're just, yeah, me too. They're awesome. Yeah, Ecuadorian Habano is a fantastic wrapper. So, <clears throat> Dominican and Nicaraguan um, filler leaves, including uh, Piloto Cubano from Dominican, which is a phenomenal leaf. And it, yeah. that's what you're tasting that's similar to the Opus X. Um, it's also expensive um, with Dominican binder and uh this ecuadorian habano wrapper so completely different construction different cigar from the regular four kicks uh and so far i'm in the first third still but just just getting to the second second third um really enjoyable smoke yeah i'm almost yeah i'm about in the second third i'm getting uh like I said, so almost similar to that Opus X. I'm getting a little bit of that uh, alcohol flavor in there. Yeah, there is that little astringent quality in there. Um, the pepper's calmed down, but it's also, for me, it's changed to a little bit to like cayenne pepper okay. from black pepper. So it's a little spicier, but there's less of it. Um, there's still like, like toasted wood that has been slathered with lard. With yeah. like some graham cracker sprinkles and toasted marshmallow. We should try to do that to a marshmallow and see if we get the same. Thing. Yeah, yeah, no, it would just taste like shit. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of which, look at that. Now there's also marshmallows in the ground. Hey. <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> Our uh, stash back here in the hot box. Uh, we've got Pepsi, Coke, Sprite, graham crackers, marshmallows. We are loaded for bear. Um, and all the Christmas decorations that need to go back in storage. <laughs> um, I'm also picking up like some clove and nutmeg. Okay. Um, really, really curious, uh, almost holiday flavor. Perfect cigar for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. For current season. Look at that ash though. It is. Dude, that is a two inch ash. Yep. I mean, straight up going for the contest there. Yeah, I'm going to try to keep it. So El Fumo has not ashed yet. Which is pretty cool. It's just hanging on there. I do see that split on the wrapper, and I would be, you know, like... Yeah. I think you're going to smoke through it. It's twice as big as when you started. It's yeah. definitely flaking apart. Uh, and I would be super worried about removing that band. No, no, it's staying on there. Yeah. That sucks, man. That's two in a row for you. Yeah, I'm going to go with Operator Error there. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Bigfoot Hands over here, just crushing the cigar as soon as it comes out of the cello. Um, so, uh, let's talk about crowned heads though, because like I said, not, uh, not everybody might know about crowned heads. So, uh, I guess the first thing about crowned heads I'll say is they have a terrible website. It is not mobile optimized. It looks like it was built in 2005, which is odd because that's before the company was started. Um, it, it's a really terrible website. So crowned heads if you want help with this shoot an email burnlinepodcast gmail.com and johnny midas will jump all over that if you want an example of what i can do you can just go to john junior.com and take a look uh there's a link to my consulting page there as well um there's too much going on in that website too it was like an hour for me to put that website together i went to school for it so anyway uh big uh, big let down there I can't even like bring up the website on my phone during the podcast yeah. and like try to scroll through. And then you got to like try to zoom in because you can't <laughs> read it. Um, 
and you know it is especially since google seo prioritizes mobile because more websites are accessed via mobile today so that was new for 2022 i think yeah when google changed their seo structure so it's also bad for business um so crowned heads get your shit together john give me a call and uh i will hook you up um so what uh what happened? What What is Crowned Heads? Basically, um, back in 2011, 2010, something like that, um, C CAO was going through a thing. Um, there goes. <laughs> oh, there goes the ash. Yeah. yeah. That was a good two inches. Yeah. That was a good ash, man. Yeah. As soon as you hit that split, it just yeah. fell off. Um, so CAO was, it was like, uh, 2010, 2011, something like that. They were going through a merger and, you know, like with a lot of M and A propositions, there's redundant positions usually at the top. Yeah. You don't need two CEOs. You don't need two CFOs, you know, stuff like that. Um, and so what happened was John Huber, uh, and a couple of the other guys decided to start crowned heads cigar brand um so the uh folks that were involved were john huber mike condor michael trebbing nancy heathman um and they were they were all superstars in the industry so they're looking at these redundancies you know and they're like let's keep the dream alive we're gonna go start our own thing um and so they really, uh, I think, went out on the limb. Like, I've, I've got to give them a lot of props. They're like, you know what? We're going to go do our own thing. I mean, that's hard to do. You know, I remember s listening to Steve Saka on an interview. He's like, you know, I've got the Saka name. And it took me seven years to, like, break even, you know. Um, so they jumped right in. Um and started Crowned Heads back in 2012. Um, so some of their uh, cigars that have been ranked over 90 by Cigar and Aficionado include Four Kicks, Jericho Hill, Headley Grange. Um, they came out with a couple of the uh, Juarez, which has the Mexican San Andres yeah. wrapper. That was a good one. Um, the Coalition. Right, which was a Drew Estate collab. Who did they collab with? Oh, yeah, why don't you? Yeah, you look, you look that up while I keep talking. Um, but they've come out with some just amazing cigars. Now, all of them are supervised by Carrillo um, at uh, his factory there in the Dominican Republic, or some of the cigars are made at Tabacalera Pichardo in Nicaragua. Um, so they're like uh, it's a boutique brand, and they don't. They don't own anything. They don't grow their own tobacco. They don't have a rolling factory. You know, they're headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee, but they have partnerships with two of the best factories, you know, in the cigar world. Um, of course, Carrillo is pretty famous. Like, the whole family is, but uh, that brand for making great, great, highly ranked cigars. Um, and so with your crowned heads, what you, what you typically have is a fairly affordable cigar. You're not talking about a sub ten dollar cigar typically, but sub fifteen, you know, ten to fifteen dollar range. And uh, for that, you're getting premium tobacco that has been masterfully blended. And I can't remember smoking a Crowned Heads that, you know, I didn't like. Um, and we did smoke the uh, Las Calaveras, so that was a Crowned Heads that we did get in here in Union. Um, they're released once a year and I've kind of got the collection going back five years, I think six years. So if you're familiar with the annual Las Calaveras release, um, that's crowned heads and that's kind of how they uh, came about and, and what they do with that. I think it is time for our cigar news of the week. Mr. Solorio, what have you got for us? And now your cigar news of the week. Angel Solorio. So, this news comes out of Oregon. Um, this is not unfamiliar territory, just nationwide, anyways, with the 
for some reason, the government period, whether state, local, federal, have been trying to come down on cigars, which is weird because they're like, their main thing is, oh, children are trying to try these, but I've been smoking since 2011. I've never, never seen, seen a, a kid, kid try to come into a cigar shop and buy a cigar. Never seen that. So anyways, <clears throat> who pronounced that? <laughs> oh, Multnomah County? Yeah, there we go. Multnomah County. Which is where Portland is. Portland yeah. is trying to ban flavored cigars. Mm-hmm. Which, obviously, the biggest one is acid would take the hit there. But I'm mm-hmm. guessing they were probably trying to target... Uh, white owls. White owls, you know, yeah. cigars. Yeah, those owls. those foil-wrapped right, which is, things they sell in gas stations. That's and, different from a legit uh, premium cigar. I, I can see a kid trying to get that. Yeah, like the, grape-flavored cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gas station cigars. So it's like, how do you write the language on that? Well, um... Yeah, it's a great question. Like, so I don't necessarily agree with uh, that type of approach. I do think that marketing to children is unethical and immoral, shouldn't be done. Um, you know, but you could just as easily regulate the retail. Like, don't put them on the counter next to the candy. You know, like have them behind the counter with the cigarettes. You know, there's there's red regulations you can put in place for display and sale that make more sense than just banning the product um i would say that uh you know pr- drew could probably get around that because you can call the acid an infused cigar not a flavored because they don't have flavors you know you can't you can't look at that box of cigars and you know it doesn't say grape flavored you know um vanilla flavored spiced rum flavored you know they have a flavor, yeah. you know, they've been infused. So they might be able to get around it with that kind of language. Um, but yeah, always disappointing when uh, yeah. you have governments that are trying to infringe on our hobby, you and know, and our rights. It's more of a blanket mm-hmm. uh, legislation. It's not like, oh, it's this. It's They're trying to grab it all. Mm-hmm. I mean, what was it, last year, earlier this year, they were trying to put plain bands yeah yeah and c- premium cigars it's like but none of that you know suggests it's a flavor it's just art artwork. well yeah i mean we <clears throat> rank the presentation on the show like everyone knows cigar art is a big part of the experience you know yeah <clears throat> i mean you know to name some bass out of this new world aroma de cuba yeah and they're spending tens of thousands of dollars on stamping equipment to make gorgeous bands because people like it right you know people, like people yeah. collect bands yes yeah you know, band collections a thing yeah so yeah. yeah to make everything plain was just dumb and then um, in other news uh imports at the end of this year are almost to the record setting of last year 2022 in 2022 by this time they had i'm not sure what the metric is Oh, units. So 186,256 units by 2022. Right now we're at 181,406. Interesting. So, and we blame the uptick in 2022 on COVID, which kind of held back production and distribution. Um, so that what does that tell me? I guess it tells me that demand is still strong. Um, there's probably still some trouble getting stock. Right. You know, demand is still high. I think they're caught up by this point. Same thing with the auto industry. Like, um, apparently next year, car prices will start to come down again. But, you know, I think in 20 years, 50 years, when historians look back at COVID, they're going to have all the numbers. Yeah. And they're going to be like, you know, car prices jumped 20% because they they couldn't make them. Right. And cigar prices jumped. Or, and, you know, all of these yeah. products, even food, you know, uh, we just don't have the perspective because we're going through it. Right. I just can't, you know, I can't fathom buying a car in the yeah. last three years. And we're still technically in a inflation still. Yeah. You know, we're still yeah. seeing some uptick in certain products. Yeah. Prices. Yep. Any more uh, cigar news? No, those are the two biggest things so far. All right. Well, I appreciate that, Angel. So getting back to this... Uh, rather delicious cigar you know it actually looks really cool without the foot band or the secondary limited edition band like that the color it's like a brown red almost looks like a padrone from far away 
Yeah, almost that cut. Yeah, it's a little darker, but um, with the gold, it it's really good looking. And that wrapper is so freaking gorgeous, man. It is. Yeah, besides the little pop there, it, it is a gorgeous wrapper. Um, even though it's getting, like, hot, you know, there's not a, not a whole lot of oil coming out mm -hmm. of the wrapper. It's staying the same. It's got this nice matte, velvety finish. Yeah. Burn has been good. You know, I haven't had, like, a razor-sharp burn line on this. It's been... Sweet. You know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, rustic all yeah. the way through. But it is burning evenly. And the transition from ash to dark to light to cigar is like a millimeter, which is a good sign. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it's burning very well. I I would suspect that this wrapper leaf was aged very well. Yeah, it wasn't rushed. Yeah. yeah. I am picking up a little bit of a floral, like a yeah. vegetal floral in this second third. <clears throat> really interesting because it's subtly changed as he smoked it. It hasn't stayed like the same flavor all the way through, yeah. which I like, but it also hasn't been dramatic. Uh, I'm waiting to see. This is right at the point where the strength picked up Yeah. on the last one I smoked. So I'm interested to see. Uh... Definitely feels a little stronger. Yeah. I definitely felt the nicotine pick up. It's a great cigar. It is a good cigar. Yeah, another uh, piece of advice I'd have for um, Crowned Heads on their website, they don't have any history well, on there. They're about... Is <clears throat> yeah, they're about... Their about page is pretty, pretty trash. Um, which, you know, that's part of, like, marketing and branding in the cigar industry, yeah. which is, you know, like, this is what people are into. They want to know the history and the heritage. They want to know about the soil and the leaf and the sun... You know, pick it from. yeah, like I, I think um, two companies that do it really well. One is Macanudo, the Inspirado line. Yeah, you can look it up, and it has like the regions and everything. That's what we're into these days. And DBL tells you who rolled it too. Yeah, D who rolled it. <laughs> DBL has a QR code on their wrapper that you can scan and it takes yeah. you right there. Yeah, and it tells you who rolled it, which is fucking cool. Um. Yeah, so some companies are doing it better. Um, yeah, and we're not dogging Crown Heads. It's like you guys have the cigar making part down. It's just the website. Yeah, we're just offering friendly advice. Your uh, neighborhood uh, MBA here yeah. giving you some some advice. So I pulled up the head on my the the website on my yeah. cell phone so you can see it. Like, so this is about the four kicks and. You can see it. it's not optimized for mobile. And so I can't even read it was the headings to, up here. Yeah, to pick a cigar, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then, like, I have to, like, zoom in, but then out, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just hard to, hard to use. Yeah, I think phone. what happened is, like, everybody who reviewed the website did it on their computer. You know, when they sat down and looked at it, they're like, oh, this looks great. Yes, it probably did look great on computer, but... I, can, I just hit the copyright policy. I was trying to hit the cigars yeah. tab. Yeah, it's real hard. So, which browser are you using? This is um, Safari. It's the native to native to the iPhone. Okay. And it is the most used browser in the world yep. to access stuff. So, if it doesn't work on this browser, yeah. you didn't do your website right. Yeah, on Chrome, the only tough part I'm having is the tab doesn't stay open. So, I can pick a cigar. Like, I, it, I hit the tab, and then it just takes me to... Yeah. Yeah. So, let's do that experiment on Safari. Not bad. So, there's the Mule Kick Limited Edition page. And, yeah, I can't read it. Like, if I zoom in enough that I can read the text, now I have to scroll right and left. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my... Uh, that's just my advice is, is uh, mobile optimize it. That is a free service offered by most hosting sites nowadays. Um, but I could literally rewrite this website in like a day and it would be awesome. So, and you know, the white text on the black background is real like web 1.5, yeah. you know, like um, the, the graphic design leaves some stuff to be. <clears throat> this coffee goes really well with this cigar. Yeah, it does. So it really wear well, this is the rum barrel aged right. and uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, 
I've got uh, also, I got the single malt scotch barrel aged and rye barrel aged. Nice. So we'll give those a shot at some point in the future. Yeah, so Cooper's uh, Cast Coffee. This is from uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island. That's basically where all your hedge fund managers live. Uh, <laughs> I think Greenwich is Connecticut. East Greenwich is Rhode Island. But you want to talk about fucking random lines on the map, go to New England. Yeah. I mean, there's counties in Texas bigger than Rhode Island, you know? Yeah. Not Greenwich Village, New York. But... <laughs> Yeah, apparently those uh, imaginative motherfuckers in the Northeast just ran out of words, you know? They're like, uh, Greenwich. Oh, we, oh, they took Greenwich. We're going to do Greenwich Village. Well, we're East Greenwich. Yeah. Of course, you know, we're recording in Hanover, Pennsylvania, where the sign for the city literally says, named after Hanover, Germany, <laughs> you know? It's from Deutschland. Yeah, like a bunch of Germans came over and they're like, we are not going to put any thought into a name. No, we're just going to name it Hanover. Hanover. <laughs> and then, oh, hey. There's a town slightly east of here. Let's call it East Berlin. Mm -hmm. Creative. Let's, yeah. yeah. Of course, that was named before there was an East and West Berlin. Right. So, <laughs> so they're like, we came from Berlin and we went east. No, they went west. <laughs> Speaking of which, fun fact, since you mentioned the West and East Berlin, Stalin's daughter actually lived in East Berlin here uh, in Pennsylvania. So she moved out here. <laughs> she moved moved to East Berlin, yes, Pennsylvania. East, East Berlin, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah. She's, She's like, like, I live in East Berlin. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. so she went oh my god! And no lies detected. <laughs> Oh, man, that is too good. Yeah. yeah, she's like, I'll be a good party member and live in East Berlin, the one in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, things you can't make up. Nope. Oh, my gosh. All right, it is time to rank this cigar. We're I'm about halfway through the second third, and, you know, we've been smoking it for an hour, so this seems like a slow burner, you know? Um, I can imagine this taking somebody an hour and a half to smoke. Yeah. Um, Really, I think you get your money's worth. But why don't we go ahead and put that to the test by ranking this cigar. And we'll start with uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, Angel, what have you got for presentation? Presentation, I want to give it an eight. The box is pretty cool looking. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's I, why I gave it an eight and not a nine was because why Columbia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The color. Okay. So that just didn't make sense as well it's like uh there's nothing colombian on this unless it was colombian hand rollers <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so i gave it a seven and um i didn't like giving it that because there's so many gorgeous elements here yeah but there were some problems the first is the the bands not lining up matters to me right. it just does it it's gives it a yeah. it gives it a low-end look and it's just bothersome you know, maybe that's the um, OCD artist in me coming out. I mean, they're they're advertising as a, an exclusive limited oh, edition. Yeah. Now it is very affordable. Yeah. You know, le sub thirteen bucks. Um, <laughs> so the box is absolutely gorgeous, but it has two problems. The first is it's a Colombian flag. I don't know why. Yeah. You know, it. You know, if there was some story there, fucking, it would be a ten. Right. You know, too but uh, <laughs> tell you. That. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second problem is the lid. So, you know, if you're a retailer, you got to slide this lid off all the way, you know, because it's a slide in lid. And then what, like prop Probably it up the behind, you yeah. know, like it's just going to look not great. Yeah. And I've seen slide off lids like this before that had slots yeah. right here where you could stand it up and stick it back in. That would have, you know, solved that problem. Yeah. Um, so... That's why I gave it a seven. Unless they were expecting it not to be sold by retailers individually. I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, the leaf, though, the wrapper leaf is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, you know. I did like the banding. Yeah. Now, when you slide the lid open, all you see is that white wax paper lining. And then when you open it up, um, the cigars are wrapped in cello. And you can't really see the wrapper leaf. Yeah. So I feel like they lost something there. I don't mind the cello wrap. I prefer cello wrap in a cigar store because I don't know. I don't want somebody else touching my cigar. Right. For this, buying a box like this with the limited edition, I would love to have opened that up and it's non cello wrapped cigars. Right. Uh, but they're probably not probably not selling a lot of boxes to consumers. Yeah, I don't probably, think so. Probably, you know, with 3,000, they're probably all going to retailers that are mostly selling boxes because 
it's a limited edition, but uh, maybe they're selling singles. And anyway, so that's a little bit of a downside there. So at twelve ninety five MSRP, what are your thoughts on price? The price, I'm going to give it a nine because it's affordable for a limited edition. The flavor is insane. So it's like you're getting a lot for 12 bucks. It's not just some run of the mill limited edition and it sucked. Yeah, okay. Um, and it's affordable. Like Joe Schmo, like you could afford it. Yeah. I think, uh, I think I'd probably give it an eight on price. I think, um, I think there's definitely value there. Um, you know, twelve ninety five is not a cheap cigar. It's not in the fifteen dollar range, so that's good. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's fairly approachable. Yeah. I would say it's it's priced where I would expect it to be. Yeah, maybe. I can see paying fifteen for it though. I think with some different branding, with the flavor that it has, you could totally charge fifteen to twenty for it and sell them. Yeah. I don't know if Crown Heads could sell them because I don't know. You know their market positioning. I know most of their cigars are affordable, um, so I think uh, I think an eight is fair there. And then uh, how about construction? Actually, we were kind of wrong there. <laughs> that makes more sense now. But it has a um, yeah. thing. Oh, so you're saying it's the Ecuadorian flag? Flag, yeah. Because it has an Ecuadorian wrapper. Yeah. Oh. So that makes more sense. That's our fault. <laughs> oh, so I get it. So the Ecuadorian flag is the same as the Colombian flag, but with the shield in the middle, right. which is not on the box. Right. And so because it has a Ecuadorian wrapper there. Well, why didn't you tell me that before we started recording? I just, <clears throat> brain fart. This is the Colombian flag because it doesn't have that shield right. in the middle of it. Okay, well, the colors make a lot more sense. It's yeah. the Ecuadorian flag as well as the Colombian flag. Yes. So Ecuador took the Colombian flag and added a shield in the middle, which is not present on this box. Yeah. Now, if you had watched Sheldon Cooper's Fun with Flags, you would know this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, there we go. Learn something new every day. So give them, uh, give them props for that. Um, I guess that makes more sense. Now, does that change anything on your presentation rating? No. Yeah, me either. All right. So let's move on to construction then. What have you got? Uh, I know you had that split in your wrapper. Uh, as far as construction, even before that split, I mean, it, like, it held itself together. It didn't pop anymore. It burned right past it. It didn't fall apart. Normally, some cigars, it just keeps going. Yeah. I would say construction, probably an eight. Yeah. I think, it's beautiful. I think I've got an eight on construction as well. So, usually, I, like, start with a ten and go backwards. Um, so, on this one, like, it burned. Um, don't have, never had an even burn line the whole way down did have to make sure I paid attention and roll it. You had the split on yours. Um, and so that brings it down to an eight. Yeah. So that's where I came up with that number. Um, so good, uh, good construction. Um, let's see, we've smoked four of these and haven't had any issues. So just for some context, sometimes we get a bad one. Sometimes we get a good one. Um, and that's why I always smoke the cigar ahead of the show. You know, I want to... Yeah be fair to the fair to the listeners um so really really solid construction not world-class construction but definitely solid i would say you do have to pay attention to it a little bit you it, it's not burning evenly on its own but if you're rolling it through your fingers it's doing fine um and then so how about flavor uh flavor i give it a nine because i it's very unique that ecuadorian wrapper you can definitely tell it's ecuadorian because it's sweet mm -hmm. and then like you said that buttered tallow roasted, uh, or yeah, roasted wood. Yeah, yeah. I actually gave it a 10 for flavor, okay. which I don't do very often. Um, it is definitely in my wheelhouse, which is probably why, you know, I, I love Dominican tobacco and Ecuadorian uh, Habano is, I mean, it's maybe my top wrapper right now. Yep. Um, I love it. It's got a sweet, sort of uh cinnamony kind of flavor to it um but it's definitely one of my favorite wrappers right now yeah so the the flavor is good the cigar it's definitely strong now right it did go from 
mid to to full and it like transitioned it's kind of odd yeah um but it's you know the the flavor is like mellow enough that it, you know you've got uh the ability to taste all the nuance you know there's some cigars like i mean i'll i'll throw padron out there mm -hmm. where it's like it's so strong that you you're not picking up a lot of nuance right and especially halfway through it's like you know your palate's coated you know yeah. it's getting pummeled um so i i ranked it higher you know 10 on on flavor this is a, a flavor i would smoke over and over oh, yeah. and over so wouldn't ever get bored of it um yeah. all right so how about experience you know this is the most sub subjective flavor is pretty subjective but experience is the most subjective i think what uh you know let's talk about use case so like I think this is definitely a lounge cigar. Yeah, yeah. I think it is a gift cigar. Definitely. I think it's a really cool hangout with your buddy's cigar. Yeah. Talk about the differences between the Colombian flag and the Ecuadorian flag, you know, <laughs> uh, and make fun of the website, you know, yeah. act like you know everything. Um, I don't, I, I, I could do it with like maybe a cookout yeah, you and could. it would, it would yeah. definitely, the flavor would go. I, I don't think I would do, you know, do yard work i don't think no. i'd walk the dog it's it's just too special for that right um you can gift it you know it's not too strong right. i think a lot of people could appreciate it you know it's not a champagne or something you can give to anybody right um but you can share it with a lot of folks yeah. that might appreciate a cigar um definitely not a beginner smoke yeah, not a beginner smoke and then you know probably not celebration level either you know i wouldn't be like oh you know, you're getting married. Here's your crowned heads, four kicks, mule kicks, limited edition, 2023, yeah. with the Colombian flag uh, on the box. Um, <laughs> it does pair great with this coffee. I think it would pair with black coffee very well. Yeah, it definitely would. I'm not sure about other pairings um, with the nuance. I think some, I think some whiskeys might actually hammer your palate in the yeah. flavor of the cigar a little bit. Maybe a rum. Definitely a rum. I think a rum would go. Um, so we, you know, with all of that context, you know, what, uh, what do you think about experience? I would say a nine. It's a great smoke, a lot going on with it itself, changing, you know, halfway and then on the final third as well. Just a lot to think about on the cigar. It's not just one thing through and through. Yeah. I had a, uh, eight for experience. Um, definitely versatile. But also just like a great, if you want to smoke a cigar and enjoy it, like this is the one. Yeah. The only thing that, uh, you know, kind of holds it back from being higher than an eight for me is um, I don't think I want to smoke this in the lounge while talking to people. Yeah. Like yesterday we had a good convo going on. Yeah. You know, with the three of us and I was smoking a New World. Great cigar for that convo yeah. because it's there. You can taste it. Um, but this one I want to pay attention to the cigar. And so... You know, if I am smoking it, like, in the lounge with my buddies, it's got to be cigar people that want to enjoy the cigar and maybe talk right. about the cigar, I think. Yeah. Um, so, that brings the total uh, ranking for the cigar to a 42. Nice. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we don't get a ton of cigars in the, you know, in the low 40s. Um, so, that's a, a pretty good ranking. And, you know, I think for me to to sum up the experience with this cigar, I would say... I would love to smoke it over and over and over. Definitely. Like if this wasn't a limited edition, I'd have boxes in my humidor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish they came in 20 count boxes instead of 10, right. you know? Um, so overall, a uh, fantastic experience. Yeah, All right. Uh, real quick on the socials, reach out burnline podcast at gmail.com. Let us know uh, what you think. Um, as well, we are on Instagram, and have you got the Facebook page up? Yeah, Facebook's up. Facebook is up, so Burnline Podcast on uh, Facebook. Reach out and uh, leave us comments and so on and so forth. Um, this show is for you, so if you have a cigar you want us to smoke, if you have a comment, anything like that, um, reach out and let us know, and uh, we would love to um, make this show more about what you want. Yeah, hear so, your thoughts about it. Um, we have, uh, one comment and I'm trying to find it on Spotify for podcasters. 
speaking of poorly designed websites, um, on the uh, Opus X episode, something along the lines of, I'll have to save up for that cigar, sounds great. So, awesome, thank you guys for listening. Um, like I said, reach out, let us know. We're trying to make this the best cigar show that you can experience, so if you have any thoughts, uh, shoot us an email, we'll read them on air, or leave us comments, you know, DM us on Instagram, that's probably where we're most active, Facebook, Threads, Twitter, whatever the hell it's called these days, um, and we would love to hear from you. That's all we have for this week. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on Burnline Podcast. We will see you again. <laughs>